I think people that don't make beer would be shocked to know what a beautiful, complex process it is. There's basically five things that go into beer. There's the water, the malt, hops, the yeast, and then finally you have the brewer managing all that because the same brewer can take all those same four ingredients and depending on the temperatures and timing at each step, he can make a completely different beer. Yeast create the ethanol that's present in beer and wine and distilled spirits. A lot of people think brewers make beer, but they don't. Yeast make beer. <laughs> brewer's yeast is probably the oldest domesticated organism. And human beings have been capturing it and propagating it for different purposes for thousands of years. I'm Jim Withy and I'm the owner of Giggy Yeast Inc. I've been a scientist most of my career. I have a PhD in yeast genetics. In the 1990s, Brewer's Yeast, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, was the first eukaryotic genome to be sequenced. It was a really important advancement in science. Much of what we know about human health comes from the study of model organisms. Brewer's yeast is a single cell that's like one of those cells in the human body, so it's easier to study. It's easy to manipulate the genes, cancer, cell signaling, even heart disease has been learned in brewer's yeast. So the process of brewing starts by grinding the malt, and he needs to extract the sugar and the protein from it. The malt is usually a barley or a wheat, it has to be grown to the right stage, germinated until the sugars start to break down, and then the germination has to be stopped by heat. The longer you heat a grain, the darker the malt gets, and darker malts have tastes of chocolate and coffee. Lighter malts are more acidic. So it goes into a mash tun where it's heated in the presence of water. As the water is heated, enzymes in the malt are activated that actually break down the more complex sugars and proteins. After that stage, the extract from the malt is drained into a kettle and it's boiled in the presence of hops. Hops are bred for a huge variety of flavors and aromas and bitterness and added at different stages during the brewing process to have different effects. One of the earliest contributions that Brewer's Yeast made to human health happened sometime about 120 years ago. A lot of prominent scientists were interested in the nature of fermentation. One of them was a French scientist named Louis Pasteur. He realized that when the wine and beer tasted correct, there was only one microorganism present under the microscope, and it was yeast. When it tasted poorly, sour or skunky or other off flavors, he was noticing all kinds of other smaller microorganisms. Louis Pasteur was able to formulate the theory that there were actually small microorganisms in the environment, in our food, water, and our air that were making people sick. He realized immediately that if you just boiled or superheated food or water, you could sanitize it to the point where it would no longer make people sick. The process of sanitizing solutions by boiling is now named pasteurization after Louis Pasteur. Once the wort, that's what it's known as, once it's boiled in the kettle, is finished, it's cooled off, usually through a heat exchanger, and piped to a fermenter, and that's when the yeast is pitched. A lot of people ask, how do you grow yeast? We cultivate yeast by storing them first at minus 80 degrees centigrade. From there, they're thawed and then they're streaked onto auger plates where we pick single colonies and then they're grown up in liquid media in larger and larger phases. And from there, they're pitched into our propagation tanks where they're grown up large scale. Each of our tanks will make enough for about a 40 barrel pitch of beer, which is around 2,000 gallons and the yeast began converting this really sweet, syrupy, hoppy beverage into something completely different. Brewer's yeast ferment to ethanol. Fermentation in its broadest sense is the conversion of sugar to energy. And if you've ever taken a hard run or a long bike ride and your legs start to burn, that's because humans ferment to lactic acid in their muscles and the acid begins to burn. Once the fermentation is completed, most beers are then transferred to a conditioning tank where they're conditioned. In some cases, like a pale ale, that might be a very brief period and it can be served almost immediately. 
In some cases, like a very complicated beer, like a lambic, it could be aged for years in the presence of different kinds of wood and different microorganisms that are gonna add all kinds of different additional flavors and aromas. People have been making beer for a long time, thousands of years, and the essentials of making beer haven't changed. There's really no alcoholic beverage that's created without yeast, or very few. You cannot overestimate Saccharomyces cerevisiae, brewer's yeast, contribution to public health. Yeast are an important part of beer and science. 